speaker is a Republican State Committee woman for Citrus County. Please welcome Ms. Gloria Fisher. Hello, fellow patriots. As Damon said, I'm Gloria Fisher and I currently serve as a Republican State Committee woman from Citrus County, Florida, which is just one county north of here. And I must tell you, I'm honored to be here, to be asked to speak in behalf of the Second Amendment. I'm here not only as a political activist, but I'm here as a life member of the NRA and the holder of a concealed carry permit. But most importantly, I'm here to give you a little different perspective. I'm here as a woman. I came to talk about how important it is for us, for women, all the women you see around you today, and all the women you live with and work with on a daily basis to protect our Second Amendment rights. As women, we are passionate about protecting ourselves and our loved ones. We are, after all, the givers of life. But most importantly, of all, uh, uh, excuse me, the act of protecting one life, one's life and that of our families when faced with mortal danger is not only an inherent God-given right, but it is also a biological characteristic of our human condition. It is important for those who try to take away our rights to understand that gun owners do not shoot to kill, we shoot to live. <laughs> Women must be visible in the charge against more restrictive control of firearms. Gun control most severely victimizes one particular group that need it most for self-defense, and that's women. Current proposals and actions by this administration will fail to make Americans safe, and worse still, will harm women the most. In reality, firearms make women safer. In a violent confrontation, a woman victim with a gun reverses the balance of power. Attackers use their size and physical strength, preying on women and our children who are at a serious disadvantage if unarmed. Armed with a gun, a woman may even have an advantage over a vicious attacker. When you are a woman who owns a gun and knows how to use it, you have an equalizer. Since most assailants are bigger and stronger than us, we and our loved ones stand a much better chance of getting away unscathed if we are armed. One FBI study asserts that firearms are the only reasonable means of self-protection, especially for women, people of short stature, people with disabilities, and the elderly. One objection to women arming themselves for self-defense is that the attacker will take away the gun and use it against the victim. That argument is based on ridiculous stereotypes, which is typical of the proponents of more government control over our lives, and they always use it to justify their attempts to usurp our freedoms. Instead of assuming that all women are incapable of using a weapon effectively, it would be more appropriate to leave that decision up to the individual woman and not to the government. <laughs> women don't buy firearms in order to overthrow the government. We buy firearms to protect ourselves and our families. Firearms do not turn ordinary, law-abiding citizens into murderers. <laughs> Studies have found that two-thirds to four-fifths of homicide offenders have prior, prior arrest records, 
most frequently for violent felonies. Such people on the fringes of society will not be affected by gun control laws. Indeed, since many of the murderers already have had felony convictions, it is illegal for them to own a gun. But they found one anyway. Disarming us only empowers them. Even a very few radical feminists are beginning to understand this. In Dallas, Nikki Kraft worked with an anti-rape group. She heard one horror story too many from a woman victim. She subsequently found, founded WASPs, Women Armed for Self-Protection. She explained her sudden revelation about the value of gun ownership for women by saying, I was opposed to guns, so this is a huge leap. But I was just so tired of being afraid to open the window at night for fresh air. For increasing numbers of women, ownership of a firearm and knowing how to properly and to use it properly are significant steps toward peace of mind and security. According to a Gallup poll conducted over a year ago in October 2011, 23% of all adult women in the United States personally own a firearm. If you are a Republican, and you all should be, you may be interested to learn that 41% of all Republican women personally own a firearm. And these numbers are growing rapidly. Many firearms dealers and concealed carry instructors report that at least half of their clients are now women and an estimated 20 million women in America own firearms. Statistics prove that armed women benefit even those who choose not to carry. In jurisdictions with con concealed carry laws, women are less likely to be raped, maimed, or murdered than they are in states with stricter gun control laws. So, here we are today, facing the real possibility that our right to purchase, own, and carry, our, carry the firearm of our choice will be taken away from us. Some of, the peop some of the proposals are outrageous, such as limiting magazines to no more than 10 rounds. The ill-informed Ill armchair liberal will ask, why do you need more than 10 rounds? We women should answer, well, Mr. Effete Liberal, because if I'm walking out to my car tomorrow night in the grocery store parking lot and a roving gang, gang of criminals picks me as their next victim, I, am, I have a much better chance of surviving if I can defend myself with multiple rounds against multiple attackers. And that is exactly what we are facing today. Those who sit nightly in front of the TV believing every bit of mainstream media disinformation about firearms. What you and I do will determine what happens in this country. I am also often asked, what can one person do? What can one woman do? Here are some suggestions. First, ladies, take control. One woman can protect herself, her family, and her neighbors. Get armed, get trained, and practice, practice, practice. Do not think about doing it any longer. Don't put it off even one more week. Get moving to provide the protection you might need. If you are a man, which most of you are here today, Please encourage the women in your lives to learn to shoot and encourage them to learn now. Next, join a group. One person, one woman connected to other women and men can influence neighborhoods, towns, states, national level politicians, and even strangers. There are numerous groups promoting our Second Amendment rights Many of them are represented here today. Find one and do whatever you are able to help 
to do, help the cause of freedom. And finally, make your voice heard. When you leave here today, call your elected officials or write a letter to the editor of your local newspaper. Tell them, do nothing to disarm women and other law-abiding citizens who legitimately and rightfully want to be able to defend ourselves. We are on a very slippery slope, hurling faster and flat faster in a slide over the cliff, which is not only fiscal, but threatens our very way of life. The calls for more restrictions on firearms or outright bans on some or all guns are really calls for significant change in our social and constitutional systems. Now, more than ever, we must come together to preserve and protect our Second Amendment rights. Fellow patriots, it's all up to us. Thank you. Okay. Go. 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 Go.